As two masked and armed men broke in, Susan Gonzalez was shot in the chest. She made it back to her bedroom and found her husband's 22 caliber pistol. Wasting the first shots on warning shots, she then emptied the pistol on one attacker. Unfortunately, now out of ammunition, she was shot again by the other armed attacker. She was not able to reload or use a second gun. Both she and her husband were shot twice. 42 bullets in all were fired. The gunman fled from the house but returned. He put his gun to Susan's head and demanded the keys to the couple's truck. Susan's attacker was undeterred after she unloaded one magazine at him. Another victim, Feng Zhu Chen, was unable to reload one-handed while trying to call police with the other. Yet another victim, Melinda Herman, defended her children with her revolver, hitting the intruder five times. He wasn't incapacitated, but he did flee the scene. In one year, 2017, the 39 million people of California endured 56,609 robberies, 105,391 aggravated assaults, 95,942 residential burglaries, and 423 homicides in victims' homes reports Cuban-born Roger T. Benitez, senior U.S. District Court Judge for the Southern District of California, a George W. Bush appointee. There were no mass shootings in California in 2017. Nationally, there are over 2.2 million defensive gun uses each year. Of those, over 340,000 people report their use almost certainly saved a life by using a gun. And these are just the incidents that were reported to police. Home invasions occur at a rate of approximately 266,000 per year. Households composed of single mothers had the highest rate of burglary while someone was home. Gun violence is used in 73,000 of these home invasion crimes, with sex assault occurring in 6,000 of them and homicide occurring over 430 times annually on average. As evidenced by California's own crime statistics, the need to protect oneself and family from criminals in one's home has not abated no matter how hard they try. Law enforcement cannot protect everyone. A police force in a free state cannot provide everyone with bodyguards. While some think guns cause violent crime, others think that lawful gun possession reduces violent crime. Yet none of these arguments changes the meaning of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, which reads, A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The amendment creates a right for law-abiding, responsible citizens to use arms in defense of hearth and home, to have common firearms available for self-defense, especially within the home. If a law-abiding, responsible citizen in California chooses to defend their home with a handgun with a magazine larger than 10 rounds, may the state deny the choice, declare the magazine illegal, and jail the citizen for possession? California, through its Attorney General, Javier Becerra, says it hopes to prevent rare but horrible mass shootings. The plaintiffs, citizens and residents of California, say that banning the possession of 11-plus round magazines is an unconstitutional experiment that poorly fits the goal. Regardless of current popularity, neither a legislature nor voters may infringe on constitutional rights. Claiming that the average defensive use of a firearm requires only 2.2 rounds, California has decided that a responsible law-abiding citizen needs no more than 10 rounds per magazine to protect oneself, family, home, and property. Only trained law enforcement can possess magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. California classifies 11-round magazines as large capacity and makes possession a crime codified under Penal Code Section 32310. Purchasing or acquiring an 11 plus round magazine is another violation. California can charge the crime as a misdemeanor, punishable by anything up to a fine of $100 or a year in jail, or as a felony carrying up to a three year jail sentence. The judge notes that California gun laws are lengthy, complicated, and hard to interpret, even if one is just trying to find the magazine size limit alone. For example, 
a hunter returning from an out-of-state hunting trip with a 30-round rifle magazine would first have to find and read California Penal Code 32310 and figure out that unnamed exceptions at Article 2, Section 32400, and Chapter 1, Section 17700, do not apply. Then, they must know how to look at the definition of a large capacity magazine, something not found in Section 32310. That definition is found in Penal Code Section 16740 and requires lawful magazines to be able to hold 10 rounds or fewer. Then, they must know to look at the definition of large capacity magazine, something not found in Section 32310. That definition is found in Penal Code Section 16740 and requires lawful magazines to be able to hold 10 rounds or fewer. At that time, the hunter may return to Section 32310 and think that their crime would only be a misdemeanor for possession of an 11 plus round magazine. But possession is not the only problem. Importing, buying, receiving, and making an 11 plus round magazine is a separate crime under Section 32310. And even if the citizen realizes that they're committing a second crime, they may falsely believe that they're only guilty of a misdemeanor offense. And that's before we consider more complicated scenarios such as the legality of loaning someone a large capacity magazine, or the fact that a felony conviction carries a complete forfeiture of one's Second Amendment rights for life under federal law. In the judge's own words, it's enough to make an angel swear. This complexity destroys the Second Amendment rights as it confuses and obfuscates the law. And since proper notice of law is part of your right of due process, the 15th and 14th Amendments are violated by these restrictions as well. Judge Benitez goes on to note that all forms of possession are summarily criminalized, including possession of a 15-round magazine in a home or a 100-round magazine while outside a school or theater. The law makes no such distinction. The possession of a 15-round magazine at home for self-defense is protected at the core of the Second Amendment, says Judge Benitez, while the possession of a 100-round magazine in a crowded public area may not be. But all Californians, like all citizens of the United States, have a fundamental constitutional right to keep and bear common and dangerous arms. The nation's founders used arms for self-protection, for common defense, for hunting food, and as a check against tyranny. At the very least, this judge finds, the Second Amendment protects individuals' rights to have and use weapons for the purpose of self-protection in the home. Finally, Judge Benitez opines that we may not have seen the last time a common defense might be necessary. Plaintiff argues that there is no genuine dispute that the Second Amendment protects the individual rights of law-abiding citizens to acquire, possess, and keep common firearms and magazines for home defense, including magazines which hold more than 10 rounds. Plaintiffs also contend that California has not met its burden to demonstrate the correct correlation between a flat ban on such magazines and its interests in public safety. Plaintiffs finally contend that the state's magazine ban cannot survive constitutionally required scrutiny. Judge Benitez states simply, plaintiffs are correct. The last time the Supreme Court ruled on the importance of Second Amendment rights was also one of the first times the court rules on gun rights since U.S. v. Miller in 1939. Miller was a bit of a mess but stood for the principle that some sort of gun possession rights exist in the Second Amendment. Heller, decided in 2008, stands for the principle that firearms, in ordinary and common use, are protected by the Second Amendment within the home. The Heller test is simple. It is a hardware test. If the firearm is hardware commonly owned and commonly owned by law-abiding citizens, is the hardware owned by citizens for lawful purposes? If these answers are yes, the test is over. The hardware is protected. Millions of magazines are able to hold more than 10 rounds and are in common use by law-abiding responsible citizens for lawful uses like self-defense. This is enough to decide that a magazine able to hold more than 10 rounds passes the Heller test and is protected by the Second Amendment. The size limit directly impairs one's ability to defend oneself. Neither magazines, nor rounds of ammunition, nor triggers, nor barrels are specifically mentioned in the Second Amendment. Neither are they mentioned in Heller. But without a right to keep and bear triggers, barrels, ammunition, and the magazines that hold the ammunition, the Second Amendment would be meaningless. Under the simple test in Heller, California's
Under the simple test in Heller, California's Section 32310 directly infringes Second Amendment rights. <laughs> Under the simple test of Heller, California's Section 32310 directly infringes Second Amendment rights. It directly infringes by broadly prohibiting common firearms and their common magazines holding more than 10 rounds because they are not unusual and they're commonly used by responsible law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. Of course, it might be argued that a 100-round or 50-round or possibly even a 30-round magazine may not pass the Heller hardware test because they might be unusual by some definition. The state of California proffered no credible evidence that would support such a finding. If the entire analysis was only as simple as the Heller test, a decision about firearm regulations could end right here. Although the Heller test itself is simple, it directly applies only to the hardware of firearms and only in the homes. Therefore, the Heller test itself does not directly apply to gun store zoning laws, firearm serial number requirements, training requirements, or other non-hardware firearm regulations. And not every gun law impacts self-defense. Regulations that do not affect a weapon's function do not trigger the same level of scrutiny by the courts as regulations that do. The court goes on to note that magazines holding more than 10 rounds are extraordinarily common. They are lawful in at least 41 states and under federal law, and estimates number them at over 100 million in quantity. And firearms with standard capacities over 10 rounds are also extremely common. The judge cites to the Glock 17 and the Ruger 1022 both of which have been sold for many years and in millions of units, as well as the extremely popular AR-15 rifle platform. These example firearms are typically sold with 15 or 30 round magazines, 10 round magazines, and other capacities are widely available. To the extent that magazines holding more than 10 rounds may be somewhat less common within California, it would likely be the result of states long criminalizing the buying, selling, importing, and manufacture of these magazines. But saying that large capacity magazines are uncommon because they've been banned for so long is something of a tautology. It's true because it's true. This cannot be used as constitutional support for further banning. The judge addresses the argument that large capacity magazines increase the lethality of gun violence. Certainly, a gun when abused is legal. But nothing in the Second Amendment makes lethality a factor to consider. The Second Amendment does not exist to protect the right to wield down pillows or foam baseball bats. It protects guns, and every gun is dangerous. If Heller tells us anything, it's that firearms cannot be categorically prohibited just because they are dangerous. If this lethality standard is followed to its logical conclusion, there would be no stopping further regulation on magazine capacity. As policy, the state says a law-abiding responsible person needs only 10 rounds to defend themselves. If you judge for yourself that you need more than 10 rounds, however, that crime is on you. Too bad if you complied with the law but needed 11 rounds to stop an attacker, or a group of attackers, or a mob. Now you are dead. By living a law-abiding, responsible life, you have just become another gun violence statistic. And your statistic may be used to justify further restrictions on gun lethality for future law-abiding citizens. California's law prohibiting acquisition and possession of magazines able to hold any more than 10 rounds places a severe restriction on the core right of self-defense of the home such that it amounts to a destruction of the right and is unconstitutional under any level of constitutional scrutiny. The criminalization of a citizen's acquisition and possession of magazines able to hold more than 10 rounds hits directly at the core of the rights of self-defense in the home. It is a complete ban on acquisition. It is a complete ban on possession. It is a ban applicable to all ordinary law-abiding responsible citizens. It is a ban on possession that applies inside and outside the home. California's ban goes farther than the District of Columbia's ordinance in Heller. The California ban leaves no room for an ordinary citizen to acquire, keep, or bear a larger capacity magazine for self-defense. There are no permitted alternative means to possess a firearm holding more than 10 rounds for self-defense, regardless of the threat. Simply put, 32310's ban on common magazines able to hold more than 10 rounds flunks the simple Heller test. 
Miller and Heller recognized that militia members traditionally reported for duty carrying the sorts of lawful weapons that they possessed at their homes, and the Second Amendment therefore protects such weapons as a class, regardless of any particular weapon's suitability for military use. But what happens if the appeals court doesn't agree that the Heller test is the only test needed to evaluate the constitutionality of the government regulation on these individual gun rights? Because the 10-round magazine limit flunks the Heller test, there's no need to apply some other level of scrutiny analysis. But, wisely, the court proceeds through a scrutiny analysis anyway, presumably to overcome any later appellate critique. When evaluating the constitutionality of a regulation that burdens a citizen's rights, there are three different tests after which a sliding scale of scrutiny is selected. Many courts go with the middle standard, known as intermediate scrutiny, the one right between the minimum standard, which is rational basis, and the maximum standard, which is strict scrutiny, which requires, in the intermediate scrutiny case, a reasonable fit between the regulation and the right. Judge Benitez believes, however, that the intermediate scrutiny is wrong, writing that it's an overly complex analysis. Instead, he begins with the highest standard, strict scrutiny. So you might want to know, how does a court determine what level of scrutiny to apply? To do so, a court applies a two-factor test. First, it determines how important the, the regulation is in terms of a burdening of a fundamental right. And then once it decides that, it directs the courts to apply the appropriate level of scrutiny for that burden. In the specific context of Second Amendment case, step two can involve determining if the regulation is on a list of categories of laws that are presumed to be okay and require the plaintiff to present evidence rebutting that presumption. This was decided in the Heller case itself. Since magazine size is not on this list, the 10 round limit is not presumed to be lawful and the court analysis continues. The court also notes that no evidence has been entered into the record regarding any historical restrictions on magazine size. Because Heller itself did not specify a particular level of scrutiny for all Second Amendment cases, courts have had to determine the appropriate level by considering how close the challenge comes to the core of the Second Amendment right and the severity of the law with respect to the burden of that right. In the 2015 Ninth Circuit case of Foyk v. City of Sundale, the court recognized that a regulation restricting law-abiding citizens from possessing large-capacity magazines within their homes hits at the core of the Second Amendment. A law that imposes such a severe restriction on the fundamental right of self-defense of home that amounts to a destruction of the Second Amendment right is unconstitutional under any level of scrutiny, according to the Heller Court, and that seems to be the case here. The court says this law impacts the core of the Second Amendment right and therefore deserves strict scrutiny analysis. A law like 32310 that prevents law-abiding citizens from obtaining a firearm with enough rounds to defend self, family, and property in and around the home certainly implicates the core of the Second Amendment. When a person has fired their permitted 10 rounds and danger persists, a statute limiting magazine size to only 10 rounds severely burns the core right to self-defense. Some have said that the burden is minor because there are other choices. But describing as minor the burden on responsible law-abiding citizens who may not possess a 15-round magazine for self-defense because there are other arms permitted with 10 or fewer rounds is like saying that when a government closes a Mormon church, it is a minor burden because next door there is a Hindu temple. Indeed, Heller itself rejected this mode of reasoning. It is no answer to say that, as petitioners do, it is permissible to ban the possession of handguns so long as the possession of other firearms, i.e. long guns, is allowed. Others have acknowledged that the burden on a citizen may be severe, but they consider it a worthwhile trade-off. In a peaceful society, after all, a 10-round limit may not be severe. But when thousands of people are rioting, as happened in Los Angeles in 1992, or more recently with Antifa members in Berkeley in 2017, a 10-round limit for self-defense is a severe burden. When a group of armed burglars break into a citizen's home at night and the homeowner in pajamas must choose between using their left hand to grab either a telephone, a flashlight, or an extra 10-round magazine, the burden is severe. When one is far from help in a sparsely populated part of the state and law enforcement may not be able to respond in a timely manner, the burden of a 10-round limit is severe. 
when a major earthquake causes power outages, gas and water line ruptures, collapsed bridges and buildings, and chaos, the burden of a 10-round magazine limit is severe. When food distribution channels are disrupted and sustenance becomes scarce while criminals run rampant, the burden of a 10-round limit is severe. Surely, the rights protected by the Second Amendment are not to be trimmed away as unnecessary because today's litigation happens during times of peace. It may be the best of times in Sunnyvale, it may be the worst of times in Bombay Beach or Potrero. California's ban covers the entire state at all times. Section 32.310's wide-ranging ban with its acquisition, possession, criminalization components exacts a severe price on citizens' freedom to defend the home. Consequently, 32.310 merits strict judicial scrutiny. Strict scrutiny requires the government to prove that the restriction on a constitutional right furthers a compelling interest and is narrowly tailored to achieve that interest. California's ban on magazines able to hold more than 10 rounds fails strict scrutiny. The state has not offered a compelling interest for the ban, arguing that intermediate scrutiny should be the test. If preventing mass shootings is the state's interest, it is not at all clear that it would be compelling since such events are exceedingly rare. If the state's interest is in forcing a pause during a mass shooting for a shooter to be apprehended, those events are even more rare. More certain, however, is that the ban is not narrowly tailored or even the least restrictive means of achieving these interests. Instead, it is a categorical ban on acquisition and possession for all law-abiding responsible ordinary citizens. Categorical bans are the opposite of narrowly tailored bans. Section 32.310 is not narrowly tailored. It is not tailored at all. It fits like a burlap bag. It is a single-dimensional prophylactic blanket thrown across the population of the state. As such, 32310 fails strict scrutiny and violates the Second Amendment. While the court found that the highest level of legal review, known as strict scrutiny, was the correct legal test, the court also did a detailed analysis of why the California law also failed under the medium-level analysis, known as intermediate scrutiny. Intermediate scrutiny is often used by courts in firearms-related cases, in situations where the court says the law does not impact the core of the Second Amendment right. Intermediate scrutiny has been used to decide cases not involving firearm hardware, for example, cases involving waiting periods. However, because the court says that this law regarding magazines does restrict the firearm hardware, intermediate scrutiny is the wrong test. But, keenly aware that many appellate courts use intermediate scrutiny analysis, the judge uses 20 pages of his opinion to explain why even under intermediate scrutiny, the magazine restriction is unconstitutional. To pass intermediate scrutiny, a statute must still be a reasonable fit. The court says our intermediate scrutiny test under the Second Amendment requires that the government's stated objective be significant, substantial, or important, and that there be a reasonable fit between the challenge regulation and the absurded objective. To survive intermediate scrutiny, the defendants must show reasonable inferences based on substantial evidence that the statutes are substantially related to the governmental interest. When considering whether to approve a state experiment that has and will irrevocably harm law-abiding responsible citizens who want for lawful purpose to have common firearms and common magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, the court declines to rely on anything beyond hard facts and reasonable inferences drawn from convincing analysis amounting to a substantial amount of evidence based on relevant and accurate data sets. Although the court must give deference to the legislature, meaningful review is still required. According to the court, although we do accord substantial deference to the predictive judgments of the legislature when conducting intermediate scrutiny analysis, the state is not thereby insulated from meaningful judicial review. No case has held that intermediate scrutiny would permit a state to impinge even slightly on the Second Amendment right by employing a known failed experiment. Congress tried for a decade the nationwide experiment of prohibiting large capacity magazines. It failed. Congress has continued this failed experiment for another decade and now suggests it may continue to do so ad infinitum without demonstrating any success. That makes no sense. California has important interests, public safety, preventing gun violence, keeping police safe. At this level of generality, these interests can be used to justify almost any law and virtually any restriction. Imagine, for example, the crimes that could be solved without a Fourth Amendment. The state could search for evidence of a crime anywhere on a whim. 
Without the First Amendment, the state could better police the internet. State could protect its citizens from child pornography, sex trafficking, radical terrorists. Perhaps the state could even limit internet use to law-abiding citizens to say 10 hours a day or 10 websites a day. Maybe even end Facebook cyberbullying. The problem with such regulations by a state government is that it bludgeons, it indiscriminately hammers on all that's in its path. In this case, it also hammers magazines out of the hands of longtime law-abiding citizens. It hammers the 15-round magazine as well as the 100-round drum, and it throws law-abiding, self-defending citizens who continue to possess the magazine that holds more than 10 rounds into the same jail cell as a criminal. Gun violence to carry out crime is horrendous and should be condemned by all and punished harshly. A defense of gun use may be the only way for a law-abiding citizen to avoid becoming a victim. Perhaps the irony of Section 32310 escapes notice. The reason for adoption of the Second Amendment was to protect its citizens of the new nation from the power of an oppressive state. So it is now ironic that the state whittles away at the right of citizens to defend themselves from possible oppression of their state. California had hoped to close loopholes in its previous magazine capacity limits by enacting the new version codified in Section 32310, but the state may not now ban lawfully kept large capacity magazines owned since 1999 as a means to ban large capacity magazines unlawfully manufactured or imported after January 1st, 2000. Lawful arms do not become unprotected merely because they resemble unlawful arms. Our founders crafted a constitution to promote the liberty of the individual, not the convenience of the government. The state goes on to make various arguments and present various experts relating to the supposed danger of 11 plus round magazines. Professor Louis Clarevas says that banning large capacity magazines will reduce violence and force shooters to take a critical pause. However, a person set on inflicting mass casualties will get around any clip prohibitions by having additional clips on his person or carrying more than one fully loaded weapon. The state also argues that a large capacity magazine enables the shooter to hit multiple human targets very rapidly and contribute to the unique function of an assault weapon to deliver extraordinary firepower, comparing them to military weapons. That large capacity magazines are useful in military service, there is no doubt, but the fact that they may be useful, or even most useful for military purposes, does not nullify their usefulness for law-abiding responsible citizens. The court notes that yet another expert was unable to find trends in data related to large capacity magazines, and another analysis based on the previous analysis was unable to find more than a desire for more and cleaner data. The state's experts still opined that a magazine limit of 10 rounds or lower could be justified. The state also relies on the expert reports of John J. Donahue, a professor of law at Stanford School of Law. Professor Donahue reports that national surveys consistently find a persistent decline in household gun ownership, describing a 2013 report from the Pew Research Center. The court has reviewed the Pew Research piece he cited. The first sentence notes the absence of definitive data, cautioning that there is no definitive data source from the government or elsewhere on gun ownership rates. It says that surveys provide conflicting results. In the paragraph directly following the portion quoted in Professor Donahue's expert report, the Pew Research report describes a Gallup organization survey that survey concludes that there has not been a persistent decline, but rather the gun ownership rate of approximately 43% is the same as it was 40 years earlier. Professor Donahue also opines that private individuals, unlike police officers, only need to scare off criminals or hold them off until police arrive. That generalization would not have been true for Susan Gonzalez or the mother of twins whose assailants were not scared off despite each victim emptying their gun. Instead of holding them off till police arrived, the only assailants remaining at the scene when police arrived in any of the three incidents described above was a fatally wounded assailant. Generalizations like these are no more than generalizations and personal, not expert, opinions. Yet, for such an important context as the defense of self and loved ones, generalizations are dangerous. 
relying on generalizations like these may lead to a thousand underreported tragedies for law-abiding citizen victims who were supposed to need only 2.2 rounds and no more than 10 rounds to scare off criminal assailants. The state asserts numerous arguments that seem to be unsupported by evidence. They say large capacity magazines are not characteristically used to protect the home, citing the case of Hightower versus City of Boston. But Hightower itself was unconcerned with magazine size. The state goes on to argue that large capacity magazines cause civilians to fire more rounds than necessary. But the court notes that the state says that only 2.2 rounds are fired on average. Even though 10 rounds are available, only 2.2 on average are used. And therefore, there's no correlation between magazine size and the rounds fired, at least according to the state's own evidence. The state argues that large capacity magazines are preferred by mass shooters, but the state argues no evidence to indicate such a correlation. And the court offers evidence that many mass shooters happen with 10 round magazines or with revolvers or other firearms that would not apply to this kind of restriction. California argues that large capacity magazines are disproportionately used against police, but again, cites no evidence to support this. In fact, in the FBI's 2016 report on law enforcement officers killed and assaulted, the average number of rounds fired by a criminal at police was 9.1. Since 2007, the average number of rounds fired has never exceeded 10, and for seven of these years, the average was under seven. California argues that smaller magazines create a critical pause in the shooting of a mass killer. This may be the case for attackers, but on the other hand, from the perspective of a victim trying to defend her home and family, the time required to reload that pistol after the 10th shot might be considered a lethal pause, as it takes a victim much longer to reload than a perpetrator who has planned an attack. In other words, the reloading pause the state seeks in hopes of stopping a mass shooter also tends to create an even more dangerous time for every victim who must try to defend herself with a small capacity magazine. So, how did California arrive at the notion that any firearm magazine size greater than 10 rounds is unacceptable? Well, it appears to be an arbitrary judgment. The state does not, however, say why California, or any jurisdiction for that matter, picked the number 10 of any possible number. Perhaps it was an unintentional legacy from the 1930s, when generally largeable detachable magazines were relatively rare. Our most popular pistol at the time, the Colt 45, held a magazine typically holding 7 to 8 rounds, and otherwise 5 to 6 round shot revolvers ruled the day. Of course, in applying the ordinary and common use test from Heller, we don't merely look to historical realities, but present realities, where larger capacity magazines are much more common. The court also finds that a 10 round magazine restriction imposes a taking clause issue under eminent domain's taking clause of the Fifth Amendment. And this is a topic for an entirely different video, but the short version is any time the government seizes property for personal use, it may have to offer what the constitution calls just compensation. And because this magazine law is a type of physical appropriation of property, forcing them to surrender it for destruction, this could force a eminent domain issue where the government would have to compensate people for this taking. Magazines holding more than 10 rounds are arms. California's Penal Code Section 32310, as amended by Proposition 63, burdens the core of the Second Amendment by criminalizing the acquisition and possession of these magazines that are commonly held by law-abiding citizens for defense of self, home, and the state. The regulation is neither presumptively legal nor long-standing. The statute hits at the center of the Second Amendment, and its burden is severe. When the simple test of Heller is applied, a test that persons of common intelligence can understand, the statute fails and is an unconstitutional abridgment. It criminalizes the otherwise lawful acquisition and possession of common magazines holding more than 10 rounds, magazines that law-abiding responsible citizens would choose for self-defense at home. It also fails the strict scrutiny test because the statute is not narrowly tailored, it is not tailored at all. Even under the more reasonable test of intermediate scrutiny, the statute fails because it is not a reasonable fit. It is not a reasonable fit because, among other things, it prohibits law-abiding concealed carry weapon permit holders and law-abiding U.S. Armed Force veterans from acquiring magazines and instead forces them to dispossess themselves of lawfully owned gun magazines that hold more than 10 rounds or suffer criminal penalties. Finally, subsections C and D of 32310 impose an unconstitutional taking without compensation. Accordingly, plaintiff's motion for summary judgment is granted. 
California Penal Code 32310 is hereby declared to be unconstitutional in its entirety and shall be enjoined. This decision reflects a freedom calculus decided long ago by colonists who cherished individual freedom more than subservient security under a British ruler. The freedom they fought for was not free of cost then and it is not free of cost now. The state is hereby enjoined from enforcing California Penal Code Section 32310. And that, my lawful masses, is how Judge Roger Benitez reasoned the California Magazine ban should be overturned. The case has already been approved once by a three-judge panel of the Ninth Circuit, and it could head up to the Ninth Circuit again for appellate review on bank, meaning the whole court hears the case. And maybe it will even reach the Supreme Court where we might get another Heller-level ruling. Judge Benitez appears to have taken his 86 pages of his opinion to carefully evaluate the legal standing of the restriction, specifically in preparation for eventual appeal. And it looks like the California Attorney General only had so many arguments on the merits before it became a wobbly, unbalanced tightrope walk of more and more reaching positions. While the ruling clearly states that the state of California is enjoined, or barred, blocked, or stopped from enforcing Section 32310, Yesterday, Judge Benitez issued a partial stay in the case. The state cannot enforce its prohibition on possession of 11-round magazines, but everyone is still barred from importing 11-plus round magazines into California pending the state's appeal. Some manufacturers and distributors have already announced plans to ship 11-plus round magazines to California again. Meanwhile, the opinion seems open to regulations on 100-round magazines, or maybe even 50-round magazines, so long as the state presents an adequate connection between the regulation at issue and the burden on the rights of law-abiding responsible citizens. And this ruling doesn't change California's strange assault weapons laws, meaning you can't just go put an 11-plus round magazine into a California-classified assault weapon or featureless rifle without also going through that legal analysis, something I've not done here and I'm not prepared to do here. Requirements for firearms training or restrictions on firearms outside the home all seem plausible under Judge Benitez's ruling, which I'm just going to call Duncan. So what do you think? Do you agree with citizens' rights to protect their homes with firearms? How do you feel specifically about the 10-round limit? Do you think it was reasonable for California, and also New Jersey and New York, to restrict magazine capacity? New Jersey's 10-round magazine limit just went into effect this year. I'm curious to see whether Judge Benitez's ruling in Duncan will be applied to New Jersey and how quickly the restrictions there are lifted. It's reported that not a single magazine was turned in after New Jersey's 10-round magazine limit went into effect. Thank you for watching. And thank you for your support. This channel is made possible by your monthly support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses. We are still trying to get YouTube to enable our join button. Thank you to our April supporters at the $50 level. Thank you to John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mintain, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Snorre Vysotsky, Sean McNamara, and Atarek. And thank you to the almost 200 $5 plus supporters currently crawling on the screen. I'll get out of your face and put up some dog video for the rest of the video. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And I'm Kurt Mueller, your favorite patent attorney. Thank you for joining us. All our love. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Judge Benitez goes on to note that all forms of possession are summarily criminalized, including possession of a 10-round magazine in the home or a one-hound one hound magazine? Are you talking to Kaylee? Yeah. Oh, hi, Kaylee. Mom says hi. Kaylee says hi back. Okay. <laughs> Let go, puppies. Chop. <laughs> yeah, I am not sure that I'd be leaving to see Kaylee if Ilsa was missing. I know. I might find Ilsa and then go see Kaylee, but I know. I'd be staying here to look for my girl. <laughs> we got him.
We got him. Those microchips paid off. Yes, sir.